coordinator here at WASP, and um, I'll be moderating our first session. Um, in this session, the theme is surrounding mental health, medical and health education. Um, we first, we have Dr. Sara Belil, who is a, con uh, is a consultant psychiatrist and um, academic secretary in the UK's branch of Sudan Doctors' Union. And then we have Professor Ibrahim Bani from uh, Emory University. And we then will finish with Dr. Wadil Bashari from University of Cambridge. Um, first, we're going to hear all the speakers and then leave all the questions to the end. Um, so if you're ready to begin. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'd like to thank Professor Alam for the invitation uh, to Sudan Knowledge Conference. Uh, I'm really pleased and honored. Uh, as uh, the introduction said, uh, my name is Sarah Bilal. I'm a consultant psychiatrist here in the UK. I'm also the academic secretary for the Sudan Doctors Union UK branch uh, here in the UK. Um, um, I was invited to talk about mental health. So it's an overview about mental health in Sudan, what's been happening, uh, past, present, and under hopes for the future. Um, my topic, surviving uh, to thriving. Um, so uh, first and foremost, I uh, uh, I would like to pay tribute to the martyrs of the revolution, to their sacrifice, commitment, bravery, and heroism. I would also like to pay homage to the youth of Sudan, to the doctors in Sudan who have led uh, on the, been at the forefront of this revolution, and to all these Sudanese professionals, including lawyers, um, teachers, engineers, journalists, um, name it, everyone, uh, for their bravery and, and courage. Um, I thought um, first to talk about... Um, well, I'm trying to have a full overview about the past of past history in developments in mental health in Sudan, but the present, what's going on, and our hopes for the future. So my outline of the talk is going to be the developments over the last decade, 10 years, the challenges and priorities that we've had, uh, the current situation uh, that um, you're all aware of as of the 3rd of June, uh, and then issues about surviving and then thriving. You can't talk about mental health in Sudan without talking about the father of African psychiatry, Professor Tigani Mahi. Uh, he is the first psychiatrist, uh, I would say, in Sudan and the whole of Africa. He finished his training here in the UK in 1949 and established the first psychiatric clinic in Sudan in the 1950s. Uh, at the time, it was called the Clinic for uh, Nervous Disorders. He was also WHO regional advisor uh, between 1959 to 1964 and remained as the chair for uh, psychiatric uh, medicine at the University of Khartoum until his death in 1970. Um, talking about sort of developing psychiatry services, uh, psychiatry is generally known as a central of medicine. Uh, it's unfortunately stigmatized not only by patients but also by professionals. So it's not been easy to have many psychiatrists to develop the field and, and to address mental health issues in Sudan. So the first and foremost challenge that we had to address was building capacity. Sudan population is around 42 million, distributed over 18 states and covering a total area of 1.9 million uh, square kilometers. The majority of the population is, done, uh, is below 25 years of age. Uh, 0 to 14 years constitute the 48 of the population, and those between 15 and 24 represent 20% of the population. As you all know, Sudan's health profile is among the lowest worldwide. Uh, it's number 154 out of 160. Uh, so a real challenge, the issue about building capacity. And to build capacity, we had to look at education, basically, education and training. Um, so what we did, we collaborated with colleagues in Sudan. So the psychiatry, Sudanese psychiatrists here based in the UK is a huge number of psychiatrists. We're over, I think, 100 psychiatrists based here. And we started working with colleagues in Sudan since 2011. Since then, we've had yearly annual conferences and workshops uh, looking to training psychiatry uh, doctors in Sudan, but also looking to support psychologist training, social workers, mental health nursing, and medical students in a way to attract people into the field of psychiatry, but also to start developing a workforce that can sort of address mental health issues all across the country. Um, as I said, starting in 2011, we had 40 participants. Last year, we had 250 participants. So a growing field. People are really interested in psychiatry. And um, 
it's always amazing when we go back there. It's like a pilgrimage every year. Most of the countries here, but also from the States, from the UAE, from Saudi, we all go back to Khartoum and, and we have these conferences. And the uptake by not only the doctors, medical students, but also the nurses, social workers, psychologists has been, uh, has been really amazing and gratifying. Uh, I would say we started thinking about how do we sustain the developments we've made so far, and, and based on this conference here, yeah, I felt it's important to address certain issues about this. So it is very much about uh, uh, the um, sustainable development goal number three. It's about good health and well-being. You can't have good health and well-being without mental health uh, well-being. Talking about quality and education, as I mentioned, uh, number four, uh, but also about reducing the inequalities. So that's about the building capacity to not only have mental health services in Khartoum, but also across the whole of Sudan. Uh, and then we started sort of to broaden a bit. We needed to start thinking about peace and justice and, and, and strong institutions as regards mental health. Um, and addressing that, we had to really think about what are the challenges, what are the obstacles in, in developing mental health further. I've put here a few. Uh, that's not sort of um, everything, but I felt these were main issues that we've been working on in the last few years. One was the mental health awareness and stigma. Uh, mental health stigma is a major obstacle to progressing and developing mental health in Sudan. That's very much linked to the spirituality and traditional healers issue. Um, I'd like to mention something briefly here about spirituality. Um, Sudan is a, a very religious country, uh, and, and spirituality and religion are very intertwined in the Sudanese culture. We do look to religion to provide solace and comfort and reassurance uh, at times of uh, health and also at times of illness. So it's not surprising that we do seek support from uh, religious and traditional healers. Unfortunately, that has at times been really, um, how would I say this, quite challenging. Uh, there has been a growth of traditional healers. Some are religious, some are supportive in a sense of providing solace and comfort, but others have used it more as a financial revenue. Uh, every year we go, there's a rise in the number of these um, traditional healer clinics, and um, with sort of very uh, bad practices, I have to say, which are, have been a major challenge. These include um, lashing of patients, uh, including starvation. It's very much an exercise of exorcism that happened here before the church used to do that. So it's very much about pushing out the demon, the assumption that mental illness is very much a, a demonic or, or satanic uh, infliction on the person. Uh, so by making the host unattractive, uh, the, the idea is that you, you get the patient better. But that involves, like I said, lashings, tying up, starvation, and recently worse practices really, choking as well, where we've lost quite a few people uh, through this, uh, these practices. So that's again something that we needed to engage with traditional healers and how do we support people, how do we raise awareness about mental health. Um, the other development priorities we had were the legal system. Uh, there are lots of issues with the legal system and psychiatry. Uh, many of you know about Masahat Kobar, uh, which is a great institution. Saying that, uh, there's lots of issues. Uh, it is, in a way, linking mental illness to criminality, which is, which is, which is unfortunate. Uh, and that's especially sort of uncomfortable when you think about people with depression, people with suicidal ideas. Suicide is illegal, and, and you would see definitely it being an obstacle to go and talk to a psychiatrist talking about your suicidal thoughts if you're worried that you may sort of face prison because of that. And again, it's an issue about knowledge. How do we know how many people are sort of committing suicide? Uh, across the world, a million people commit suicide. Uh, on a daily basis. So it's, it's really important that we know numbers if we're to address any preventative strategies. Um, other issues about the legal system is the Mental Health Act. That was first drafted in 1997 in Sudan, and we've been campaigning for this uh, since 2013. Uh, Mental Health Act is very much about respecting patients' rights. People, when they're unwell with mental illness and family brings them to hospital, or if they've done something wrong while they were unwell and they ended up being in the forensic system, they don't get any opportunities to appeal. If they get better, there's just no way of getting out. Uh, like someone who's committed a crime would have a prison sentence, it finishes, and they're out. With mental illness, even with treatment, uh, people are, are, have no rights. So it's very much about how do we get a mental health act, something that's lawful, where someone to be detained under, uh, under a mental health act into an institution is respected by law, uh, they have a period of time, they can appeal, the system of tribunals. And we've been working actively, Sudanese um, psychiatrists here in the UK, as well as uh, across, the, across the board, really, in United Arab Emirates, um, 
Professor Z Dr. Zan Amar has been actively working on this, and colleagues in Sudan. Unfortunately, like I said, even till last year, the uh, approval was blocked at the last uh, stage, really, reaching the Ministry of Health. It, it just didn't uh, happen. Um, while all this is going on, as I said, these were annual conferences that we went to in Sudan, and, and the idea was about how do we develop mental health services. Uh, but during this time, the country wasn't static. There was a time, this was a time when people were sort of, there was that uprising happening. And, and people were so, in Sudan over the last year have been actively working towards a change uh, across the board. And uh, with the spirit of the uprising, we here at the Sudan Doctors Union held an a conference, an international conference that was quite unique, and that was on the 6th and 7th of April of this year. It was unique in that it brought all Sudanese doctors across the globe together. So we got the Sudan Doctors' Union from Ireland, from Canada, colleagues from the States, uh, from the Gulf. We had colleagues from Sudan, not only doctors, we had psychologists, we had nurses, we had um, uh, medical educators, all trying to come together to try and think about a new health system. Uh, about an alternative policy. We felt that change was coming. And, and, and the date says it all. 6th and 7th of April was the day of the sit-in. After months and months of protest, uh, peaceful protest, that was the day when people did have the sit-in in front of the um, military headquarters. So it felt quite apt and the right time. And that conference, we managed to endorse the transitional plan, uh, alternative health plan, uh, addressing all health issues. Uh, and then that was taken forward with colleagues in the States, again, collating all the information and incorporating all colleagues, a collaborative effort to try and come up with an alternative plan once the revolution is uh, successful and we have a new civilian government. Um, the focus of the conference, as I said, was alternative health policy, and it was very much looking at uh, what we need to do to bridge that gap of where we were, we are now to where we should be. Uh, thinking about a new health system for the 21st century, and uh, it doesn't surprise any of you that there's a huge, not just a gap, it's a chasm, really, between where we are now and where we'd like Sudan to be. Uh, the guiding principles for these alternative health policies were very much based on uh, health is human right, it's an investment in human development, and not the mere absence of disease, and uh, that government had a key role in stewarding, in governing, uh, and, and providing health. It had an obliga obligatory role. It had to be pro-poor people, pro-gender, and responsive and equity-focused, and of course, evidence-based. Uh, we looked at dimensions of quality in that sort of uh, alternative health policies, looking at accessibility, safety. The challenge in Sudan is the mis misdistribution of health services, so everything seems to be aggregating in Khartoum, in the capital, with hardly any services uh, in the provinces. I'm talking about mental health here specifically. Um, and that's unfortunate, um, because we sort of started engaging with the primary care, uh, primary health preventative uh, strategies way back in the 1970s. But more recently, in the last decades, it's become very much curative and re reactive rather than any preventative work being done. Uh, and of course, there was... Uh, suffering areas where the uh, conflict zones of Darfur, uh, Nuba Mountains, and, and the Blue Nile, uh, where they've uh, unfortunately been neglected for quite a few decades, really. I wouldn't just say years. Um, this was a time when we were really quite actively working as, as, as health professionals across the whole sector. Uh, and it, it was very much within the spirit of the revolution. We were sort of we were thinking things were moving in Sudan. We were moving across here as well and all over, making plans, what we would do, how we would sort of establish a new health system, how do we go about that, and feeling quite optimistic and positive about, about, uh, about the revolution. Uh, by this time, it was a fully successful revolution, managing to topple the dictatorship of 30 years. And uh, everything was quite optimistic and looking forward to, um, uh, to a new time, really, to a new Sudan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, 3rd of June happened, uh, the, the massacre. Uh, and I'll give you the latest figures we have from Sudan. We have uh, confirmed 128 dead people, uh, 42 reported uh, rape assaults. Um, of which um, we've got confirmation about 14. Um, there have been suicide, uh, there have been uh, death as well, um, those reported rape um, assaults. And sadly, it's, it's, rape is, is a weapon, is a weapon of, of, of humiliation and torture. Um, and I have to say, it's men and women. Uh, over 700 uh, people are injured, a few are still missing, and we have a whole country that's grieving. So after sort of... Uh, 
after all that optimism and hope and where we're going, we're suddenly faced with a new development, uh, a massacre, unprecedented really, uh, in recent times, uh, the number of death toll uh, in one day in, in one place. Uh, and, and atrocities really, throwing bodies in the Nile, what was that all about? Uh, injuring children, women, burning uh, places. And uh, you all know about what, uh, how doctors have been targeted. Uh, they've um, suffered through, again, killing, being shot at, detained, and uh, again, colleagues uh, raped as well. Uh, hospitals were um, uh, locked. Uh, patients weren't able to access care. Um, uh, again, uh, hospitals invaded by, by the uh, militia Janjaweed. Um, atrocity, a real atrocity uh, beyond anything that we could imagine. Um, which brings me to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We were at a point where we were thinking about psychological needs and, and, and fulfillment at a time when we were thinking about further development. And suddenly we sort of spiraled down back to basic needs. We're now looking at security, safety, making sure that people are safe. And uh, rather than thinking we're moving on with the plans that we had, we're now back to psychological first aid. Providing, trying to look into providing social and psychological support, um, looking to the needs of the individual, but also the family and the community, uh, looking to support people to cope during this period of time of grief, and to try and avoid further mental health and psychological problems. And again, it's really difficult, even psychological first aid without feeling safe is very difficult to do much with that, let alone to engage in further therapy. Um, just a brief idea about what that's all about. It's very much about listening, looking and, and listening to people and trying to link and, and, and make connections. Uh, and this is what our colleagues are, are doing uh, in, in, in Sudan at the moment. Um, it is a humanitarian crisis. Um, it's a totally unacceptable violation of international human rights law, uh, sort of looting of medical equipment, um, assaulting healthcare workers. And these are the people providing care. Uh, the mobile health Clinics in the, in the sit-in were burnt. Uh, people weren't allowed to access any help. And female workers, health workers, are particularly targeted even today. Uh, people are struggling, doctors, midwives, nurses, uh, to provide care because of the, uh, not only the detention, killing, but also the rape assaults and, and the harassment that's uh, going on at the moment. Um, the... Um, WHO uh, last week um, issued a statement, um, I'll just quote that, I'll just read that out, unacceptable situation that has not only resulted in death and injuries but also attacks against the very professionals and facilities meant to help. And they call for an immediate cessation of all um, activities that put the lives of health staff and patients at risk and disrupts the delivery of uh, essential health services. Um, it is a hard time but I, I, I would like to sort of not leave it there, I would say that the spirit of the revolution is there. Uh, we are still uh, very firm in the belief uh, that we will get freedom, peace and justice. We are working towards a democracy, a civilian government, and we are sustaining that by the youth that we have who are leading this revolution. Um, a, a Sudanese people uh, will get their democracy through the belief and, and the commitment and the resilience they've shown so far and the bravery and courage. Uh, I would like to pay tribute again to, to all people in Sudan who are working very hard uh, to maintain that commitment and resilience and applaud the courage and bravery. Um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it's very much about raising awareness and keeping Sudan very much in the international agenda to try and bring pressure to uh, the handing over from the military, transitional military council to a civilian government. Thank you. Um, we're now going to open to any questions that anyone has. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu Musa Ahmad. I'm from Multimedia. University of Malaysia. Uh, it's a very good session. Uh, yes, I have a question to Dr. Sarah. Uh, actually, in Sudan, we have very common mentality of exclusion. Mentality of exclusion among the Sudanese. Al-Ikhsa. Aqliyat al-Ikhsa. This is a very serious problem. All the problems that we are facing in Sudan because of the, this exclusion mentality of Sudanese personality in politics or everything. And this is uh, contributed to non-collaboration. Sudanese are not collaborating 
in terms of research, in terms of anything that can manage. Socially, they are very connected. But when it comes to business, they are very reluctant to share. Uh, have you gone through any study to analyze this very dangerous mentality that is the main factor we are lacking behind? Thank you for the question. Um, I would actually disagree. I don't believe Sudanese people are excluded at all. Um, يعني, Sorry. Specifically in political aspect. Specifically in political aspect. Um, I, I will just say one, one simple example. يعني. How exclusive is that? That is the most important thing that we have to do under one heading. The Sudanese people have come together with one aim. The Sudanese people have come the unionists. Again, so long as the goal is clear, well, vision is clear. There is no exclusion here. The problem is that the agendas are different. Here is the problem. But when the common theme is about the well-being, about the better good, about the vision that everyone can aggregate around, I don't see any people would be exclusive at all. There is no one who is excluding the other. The problem is that the story is about sharing in a pot, but everyone has a different agenda. The problem is that for me, it was really, how do I say this? A pleasure to see. إنه بالعكس الناس دي كلها aggregated around one common theme اللي هو يعني I would say اللي هو الشاطر حق القوة الفرية والتغيير لأنه ال ideals وال vision is clear وما في two can doubt it يعني دي الحتة اللي أنا بفتكر إنه أزال ما عايز يكون progressive ولا leading لأ change يمكن هو يحس بالإقصاء لكن everyone who actually wants a better Sudan wants a new Sudan wants a place where there's freedom where these beautiful حاسة شفناه من اليوث حاسة شفناه من الطلبة دي والدكاترة الصغار يعني Sudanese people deserve a better life they do يعني from every walk of life يعني they fought hard for it and they've been repressed for so long ف يمكن الإقصاء يكون لبيبل who are not actually willing to to join في movement towards a free Sudan, which is peaceful, which is progressive, uh, which is 21st century Sudan. But like, I wouldn't say يعني, uh, the exclusion, so long as our people are sharing the same, same goal and vision. There is no exclusion. Why until now we have this agreement to form transitional government? <laughs> طبعاً أنا أتوقع حاجة تيبات mental health لكن still I will say I will I'll answer that being a unionist um, المشكلة بتحت ال power people find it very hard to let go of power uh, people are fearful of reprisals people are fearful of investigations these have been 30 years of atrocities يعني you think about the conflict zones Darfur Darfur is a huge huge issue and it needs to be opened up جبال النوبة نيل الأزرق الخرطوم now يعني Everyone knows, يعني, انت, you leave a power seat, you are going to be put on the question seat. يعني. Uh, the problem is we can't, يعني, ما ممكن الناس تنسى الحاجة الحاصلة دية. It is not fair. يعني, people have suffered, people have been oppressed for years. And لازم uh, يحصل يعني, uh, acknowledgement to resolution للحاجات الحاصلة عشان الناس تقدر to move forward. Uh, لكن so long as people are clear, and keen on a better Sudan, and as it goes on the personal, or to be able to see a bigger picture, I wouldn't say you know, a solution is not going to happen. I would very hope, yeah, I'm very hopeful in a solution would happen, and pretty soon, hopefully. I'm sorry if you give me a chance. Actually, I have very hard experience to dealing with Sudanese, especially in research and development, as a supervisor or a collaborator. Sudanese are very reluctant to share. Even the PhD student we supervise, they don't want the supervisor to share with them. And I have found this very common mentality. I'm talking from very serious. I, ha I have seen the problem, actually. It's hard to supervise a student from Sudan. It's very hard. I don't like the and the generalization. I contribute uh, regularly to workshops or conferences with the Sudanese psychiatry specifically. But as academic secretary in the Atibba for in Gilterra, we do not see this. Relaxed, we see a very collaborative spirit. Uh, um, I, I wouldn't go far. Even this example, يعني my colleague here, uh, the, the work they've done in Sudan, uh, it, it, it's, it's an, enough of an example. Umab is collaborating as Sudanese مع Sudanese, like in even inviting other collaborators uh, international to collaborate مع Sudan. Um, 
the Sudan of, of yesterday has moved, and the and, and spirit of the youth that we see today, the way they managed to conduct a sit-in, the city we saw, and we saw a glimmer of the Sudan that we all dream of. في الفترة حقت الاحتصام دي وي كود سي البيوتي حقت الكولابوريشن السبيريت حقت الشاي بيوين الارت الميوزك التمثيل الدريمز التوكس اتس ا ديفرنت اتس ا ديفرنت يوث توداي ذن الون مي بي ذات يعني واز ذير ا لونج تايم اجو لانه الحاجه اللي حسب ذا يوث ذات ويل نوت بي ستوبد Uh, it is forward-thinking, it is quite civilized, it's quite progressive, it's brave and courageous, and, and uh, I, I wouldn't like to generalize an experience that you, you talk about. I hope I've answered the question. Thank you very much. Actually, I want to get the best of your knowledge through this question. Please take it easy. Thank you very much. I want to get the best of your knowledge through this question. I want الانتحار هو بمر بظروف نفسية تعبانة جدا جدا وصلته المرحلة دي إنه ما في ما في يعني فائدة من حياته ففي السودان في كل دول العالم الإنسان اللي بيلجأ للانتحار ويفشل بتعالج لكن في السودان عندنا الإنسان اللي بيفشل في إنه ي ي تكمدس سوسايدال he failed to 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 access on this So he will be you know, targeted by the government to be put to the scene. For into, I mean, the Catra, Britain, and you have some things. I mean, you have the power to get the government to the government. You have done nothing in this area. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for the question. Of course, this is a very sensitive topic. وفيها شغل كثير يعني ماشي طبعا المشكله انه الستيك هولدرز كتار في القصه حقت الليتيجيشن الليجل سيستم في قصه الانتحار سبيسيفيكلي ففي في يعني في كميه من الاطباء النفسيين شغالين كانوا مع الناس الحكومه مع الناس الوزاره مع ناس الاوقاف عشان تو تراي ان يصلوا لحته بتاعت انه الاندرستاندينج بيهايند الانتحار والسويسايداليتي يعني بكل المقاييس قلت لي انت يعني هو لو ما مات حيترمي في السجن وحاسها وي تزمانش بين الناس يعني الاطباء والحقل الطبي دي ويل سبورت هذول بينه ما ماتوا يعني انه ما ما يعني ات از دان اي تريتمنت بتحصل ما بكون مثلا انه دي ويل انفولف البوليس وكده لكن طبعا لو البوليس عارف حتكون مشكله يعني فايت از ات از ات از ا ريل تشالنج يعني لانك انت هاو تو اكسس كير وسبورت وانت مثلا عندك سيفير ديبريشن Well, well, suicidal thoughts are part of the symptoms of the illness. Uh, how to, for example, people who have or bipolar. I mean, the of the One of the major complications of the is the It's hard to take like a preventative strategy and to make like a program addressing suicide when it's illegal. How do you even bring it on the, into the conversation? How do you bring it and talk about it? طبعا يعني I would say كأطباء نفسيين it is very much part and parcel of the the treatment حقتنا the investigation that we do كان هنا كان في السودان في السودان طبعا يعني لما نمشي نعمل training I have to say a psychologist a psychiatrist يعني كلهم well trained into um, assessing the risk حق suicide و, و implementing and supporting the patient into a management plan including the family and making sure that they have access to the treatment and the pathways of care. لكن المشكلة طبعا انه how do you get people to reach that point انه حتى يصلوك انت كبروفيشنال to start talking about it بس like I said lots need to happen لسه this is area of, of progress or development that we need to work out بنحلم بفضاء اوسع بنحلم بزمن أجمل بلاد ملا بلاد ملا